Hello, I am Joshua P. Warren, and this is Joshua P. Warren Daily. And in today's podcast, I am going to give you two simple experiments to do. I know you will find them both fascinating, and who knows, they might even change your life. We'll see. That's why we call them experiments. One of them is a suggestion for a new manifestation technique. And this is really great because it's a technique that can be applied to any form of manifestation, whether we're talking about, well, prayer or wishing machines or meditation or magic wands or whatever your thing is. This is a technique that can apply. Very interesting. And uh, it brings up a lot of questions we'll dig into. But before I get into that, I want to talk about something that I don't usually talk about, and that is medical stuff. And it's a strict policy of mine not to talk about medical stuff because I'm not a doctor and I'm not qualified to give out medical advice, so I never have, never will, don't want anybody to ever accuse me of doing that. However, I'm not giving out any advice. I am going to tell you what this guy said who wrote this book I read. I just finished reading this book and uh, I will, I'll tell you sort of, you know, what I learned. And by the way, I have no connection whatsoever to the author of this book or the content of this book. You know me, I, I'm addicted to learning. I'm Mr. Curiosity. And so I'm always just out there looking at books and audio books and products and things uh, on, on the internet. Um, you know, I would be the perfect host of Jeopardy. Don't you think? I have that kind of a, a, a quizzical mind. And <laughs> I am not going to go out and pursue the hosting job at Jeopardy. But you can pursue that for me if you want to. If you want to contact the folks at Jeopardy and say, I think Joshua P. Warren would be a great Jeopardy host. I will take that job if they offer it to me. I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's get to the content of this podcast. So I was looking through books on Amazon. And, and you know, you get to a point where... Amazon, they're, they're always referring things to you. Like They're like, well, you bought this, so maybe you'll like that. And they do a pretty good job. And you can imagine, I'm always looking into very strange topics. And so Amazon recommended this book to me. It just caught my attention. It is called The Ultimate Guide to Red Light Therapy. How to Use Red and Near Infrared Light Therapy for Anti-Aging fat loss, muscle gain, performance, and brain optimization. Okay, sounds like an infomercial immediately, right? It's got a, a pretty striking cover. There's a, a human figure there uh, with sort of glowing red with all these little neurons popping. But what really caught my attention is that despite the fact that this sounds like an infomercial, it has 757 reviews and practically five out of five stars and i know as an author that people can get pretty vicious anytime they're leaving reviews but especially when they're leaving a book review so when you have that many reviews and it's practically five out of five stars you know that's that's notable so i was like huh well what is this all about and then i read a little it says um if if there was a pill that was scientifically proven to help you look 10 years younger, lose fat, improve hormonal health, fight pain and inflammation, increase strength slash endurance, heal faster, improve your brain health, and increase your energy levels, it would be a billion dollar blockbuster drug. Doctors all over the world would call it a miracle drug, and millions of people would be told to start taking it. Well, here's the crazy part. That drug exists, but it's not a pill. It's red light therapy. Do you know that light has the power to heal your body and optimize your health? Of course, everyone knows about the importance of vitamin D from sunlight, from UV light, but few are aware that there is another type of light 
that may be just as vital to our health, red and near infrared light. You may have even already heard about the benefits of red light therapy or seen ads for various devices, but maybe you're skeptical and think it's all just hype or pseudoscience. Believe it or not, there are now over 3,000 scientific studies proving the powerful health and anti-aging benefits of red and near-infrared light therapy. So if it's so great, why isn't everyone already using it? Simple. You have to spend $5,000 or more on a laser device or spend over $100 for each treatment in a medical or anti-aging clinic where this technology has been used for decades. So here's the great part. New breakthroughs have allowed us to harness these benefits in the comfort of our own home without the need to spend thousands or an expensive laser device or a hundred dollar per treatment at a, at a clinic. Uh, we can now do red light therapy at home as much as we want at a tiny fraction of the cost. Um, okay, so it goes on and says the, the, the author of the book, Ari Witten, is a best-selling author and he tells you how to use red light to do all these amazing things. Fight skin aging, wrinkles, cellulite, look 10 years younger, lose fat, says nearly twice as with diet and exercise alone, rid your body of chronic inflammation, fight the oxidative damage that drives aging, increase strength, endurance, and muscle mass, decrease pain, combat hair loss, build resilience to stress at the cellular level, speed up wound injury healing, combat some autoimmune conditions and improve hormonal health, optimize your brain function and mood, overcome fatigue and improve energy levels. It just goes on and on. All right. And so I was like, all right, fine. I'm uh, let's let's uh, let's read about this. Cost me $2.99 to hit the button and purchase the Kindle version of this book, The Ultimate Guide to Red Light Therapy. So I've got the Kindle right here in front of me and basically, okay, I'll, I'm, first off, I'm going to give you sort of the gist of what it's saying here. This author is saying that, as I just mentioned here uh, in their promotional text, that people have been aware, doctors have been aware supposedly that just being exposed to red light or near infrared and by the way if you need to brush up on your electromagnetic spectrum a little bit you know the part of the spectrum that you can see starts at red the color what we perceive as the color red on the low end which is a long uh, wavelength and then it goes all the way up to uh, violet on the high end which is a short wavelength so red and violet are the two most extreme colors we can see. In the middle, you have orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, right? So what that means is if you, there is, however, light just outside of red that you cannot see with your naked eyes. And so that's called infrared. And then there's light right outside violet that you can't see with the naked eyes. That's called ultraviolet. So what he's saying is that range right there at the low end, long wavelength, which is red um, going into the infrared, that that is what we're talking about here, which is actually the opposite end from, you know, the ultraviolet light that you're getting from the sun. So he's saying this is something different than just getting UV, which of course you know can be dangerous. You're not even really supposed to look at a black light that can hurt your eyes. And sometimes you can look at a black light that produces UV and you can actually feel it hurting your eyes. Uh, but then he says that the infrared here and the red, it does all these other things that people don't don't really seem to know about. And I'm, I'm going to tell you in a minute what he is saying in this book. Um, for one thing, he said that, yes, you don't need to go out and buy these ridiculously expensive devices, that there are new studies that are coming out that are basically saying almost any form of red light can be beneficial that uh and, and we're not talking about like a heat lamp because he said it doesn't have to be something like you'd heat up your french fries with or whatever at, at a restaurant or, or, or warm them no we're not talking about that just red light but it needs to have you know a decent amount of intensity and in other words there are these devices that you can buy on amazon right now that say they're red light therapy machines 
and some of them still cost hundreds of dollars but ultimately as long as you have a, a pretty strong red light that's capable of shining on your body for a few minutes a day or at least twice a week or whatever it's supposed to make a difference and of course anytime you're talking about somebody irradiating themselves with some kind of energy you have a lot of variables involved in terms of the intensity of the source and uh, how close you are to it how far you are away I mean there are all these variables but he's saying like look you don't you, you know you, the, the, if you can benefit from just having a, a significant red light at your home that you just shine on yourself w with certain sessions you don't want something that's too weak like a little tiny ass led that's not pushing much power and i'm going to tell you what i bought because after reading this book i got onto amazon and i bought something for thirty dollars and i'm going to tell you what it is and this is just what i decided to do you might not need to buy anything maybe you have something at your house you can use to experiment with this but when it comes to the question of like how does this work well this book it's a big ass long book it's like 200 and some pages long very very detailed it's easy to read it's got illustrations i mean it's a great it's a very very well written great thorough book and so if if you want to really do this and dig into it and learn about this for yourself like i say you can uh you can get the kindle for 2.99 you don't even need to have a kindle by the way if you didn't know this you know, a Kindle is a little device that you buy from Amazon so that you can read their books on this little device. But you don't need to do that. You don't need to buy the Kindle reader. You can just go to Amazon and buy a Kindle and they have a little player or it's like it's like a little online Kindle that pops up and you can read Kindle books on your computer. And I'm sure you can do this on your cell phone as well, your smartphone. So you don't even need a Kindle anymore to read a Kindle book. So as long as you have a smartphone or a computer, you could be reading this book for $2.99. So if you're interested, that's what I, I recommend you do. So the, he's got all the little details laid out here for you. But uh, what I wanted to, to share with you is... Um, some more information about like why this supposedly can work and he says it boils down to two things and he and he gets very specific but he says in a nutshell the first thing is by exposing yourself and i mean and pretty much you know we're talking about either stripping down your whole naked body and bathing yourself in red light or if you have a particular problem area you know you can put that red light there and focus on it uh, he says the number one thing is this stimulates ATP production in the mitochondria. And I know I'm laying out some big words here through interacting with a photoreceptor called cytochrome C oxidase. Okay, I, trust me, I understand. Let me explain. I had to look up some shit too. So it says stimulating ATP production in the mitochondria okay well for one thing a mitochondria uh, mitochondria is a little organ inside of some cells so uh, not all human cells have them but uh, some of your most important cells do your heart your liver so it's a part of a cell and that little part of the cell produces this thing called ATP and, and by the way, you know how like you could say uh, if you look at a human being as a whole and you say, well, your kidneys do this for your body and your liver does this for your body and your pancreas does this for your body. It's no different than saying, let's pretend a cell is like a little human being and it has its own little organs. And the mitochondria is one of these little organs that some cells have, which produces ADT, uh, or excuse me, ATP. And so ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and wikipedia says adenosine triphosphate i'd never heard of this by the way uh, it says is an organic compound that provides energy to drive many processes in living cells such as muscle contraction nerve impulse propagation and chemical synthesis found in all forms of life 
ATP is often considered as the, quote, molecular unit of currency, end quote. Let me repeat that. That's, that's pretty profound. The molecular unit of currency of intracellular energy transfer. That sounds pretty important. The unit of currency to transfer energy between cells is this stuff called ATP. So he gives uh, his version of what exactly this stuff is um, and how it applies to, to the red light stuff. Let's see here. Um, okay, so he writes, the mitochondria are the life-yielding, energy-yielding engines within the cells of all living things. Our mitochondria produce cellular energy in the form of ATP. Our bodies are constantly producing and using massive amounts of ATP in every cell in order to fuel every function in the body, from breathing to thinking to lifting a dumbbell. Every time you breathe, digest food, your heart beats, or you perform a bicep curl, your cells are using ATP energy. Our heart and liver are packed with mitochondria because they work constantly to pump blood, give life, filter toxins, and protect us from toxic damage. The brain is also packed with mitochondria. So are all our organs, tissues, skin, and especially muscles which power us through movement. The mitochondria are the batteries that fuel all the processes of our organs. Thus, things which enhance the mitochondria translate into more cellular energy inside the cell, which allows the cell or organ, like the brain, heart, liver, skin, muscles, etc., to work optimally. However, since we don't get enough red light anymore, we are paying the price in the very core of our cells themselves, our mitochondria, the energy generators in our cells. And this has dire consequences for our health because we need red and near infrared light therapy to generate energy efficiently in our cells. Thus, this lack of red and near infrared light today impacts every organ and tissue in our bodies because every cell in our organs, tissues, skin, heart, liver, lungs, all contain mitochondria. This gives our heart energy to beat, our skin the energy to synthesize collagen more efficiently, our liver energy to detoxify, and so forth. And then he goes on to talk even more about um, how all this works. So I think you get the picture. He's, he's saying it's very, very important to have uh, a good production of ATP from the mitochondria. And so the first thing in a nutshell that he says this exposure to red light does once again, stimulates ATP production in the mitochondria. The second thing, he says it creates a temporary low dose metabolic stress. It's called hormesis, which is a primary mechanism of why exercise works. A temporary low dose metabolic stress that ultimately builds up the anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and cell defense systems of the cell. So he's saying that this produces a little stress similar to what you experience when you're doing a workout, which kind of makes sense to, sense to me because the reason that infrared is associated with heat um, and it, is that infrared starts to physically interact with physical matter and and it has a little friction there so that's why for example um if you go lower than red and infrared you finally get down into microwaves which are so low that you know it's an oven you put your cheeseburger in there it heats it up so i can see why it makes sense that red is going to be more interactive um, than other types of uh, other types of, of colors, and he claims that red, you know, the, the proper red light 
it, it, it will penetrate through the cells and go right into the mitochondria and do some work there. Okay, that's what he's claiming, that it's just the right frequency to do that. Just, just red light. You know, we're not talking about anything high tech here, just red light. Um, so the last thing I will go to here to sort of uh, reiterate what he is talking about, page 57. Uh, so here, here is more detail about what he says being exposed to red light can do. Anti-aging effects in the skin, such as enhancing collagen, synthesis, production, and elastin production for youthful skin and dramatically reducing cellulite. Next, lowering inflammation, which applies to so many areas of life. Next is enhancing fat loss. Next is enhancing physical performance and muscle recovery afterward. Next is boosting testosterone. Next is speeding wound healing. Next is spurring neurogenesis in the human brain, strengthening synapses, spurring brain cell growth. Next is helping prevent cognitive decline. Next is reducing waist circumference and liberating fat from cells so it can be burned again. Next is enhancing physical performance and muscle recovery afterward. Next is enhancing fertility. Next is combating gingivitis and promoting healthy gums. Next is enhancing stem cell implantation and proliferation. Next is enhancing gland health from the thyroid to the lymphatic system. Next is clearing skin for sufferers of acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis. Next is improving eye health. Next is fighting chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Next is potentially helping the body to fight cancer in tandem with chemotherapy. Next is removing wrinkles, lines, and veins on the surface of the skin. Next is increasing energy. Next is improving the appearance of scars. Next is killing pain. Next is protecting cells against damage from stress. It says this list might seem too good to be true. How could one technology benefit so many totally different types of conditions? And he says it's quite simple. The health of every organ and every cell in the body depends on the energy being produced by the mitochondria in those cells. Thus, because red slash near infrared light therapy works to enhance mitochondrial energy production in essentially every type of cell in the body, it can enhance the cellular processes and cellular health of potentially almost every type of cell in the body. Okay. Are you sold on this yet? The, the, the thing that I like about it is, again, I bought this for $2.99. It's well written. It's got great reviews. And it seems like a simple thing you can try. So why not try it out? You know, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm in pretty good health. But I'm not getting any younger. I'd love to have a little help shaving off 10 pounds right now. That sounds good. I mean, more energy? Who couldn't use more energy, right? He He's not selling a product. He, he does give some suggestions, some references for different types of products, but he doesn't sell anything in the book. Uh, again, the book, if you want to read in detail yourself, it's called The Ultimate Guide to Red Light Therapy. And it's by Ari, that's name, uh, that name is spelled A-R-I, Ari, A-R-I, Witten, W-H-I-T-T-E-N, Ari Witten. Um, if you want to get a paperback, looks like they're $15.99 on Amazon. So, you don't want some little weak dinky light uh, to try this out. But you, you also don't want to fry yourself with some kind of giant heat lamp. So, you know, after reading his book and reading some reviews and doing some more research on the internet, here's what I decided. I'm a pretty busy guy, and I don't have time to just lay around naked, butt-ass naked, in front of a red lamp every once in a while. I, I mean, I might do that once, but then I'm probably just going to never get around to doing it again. So I figured, you know what, for me to actually do this on a regular basis, uh, it's I'm going to have to incorporate it into something that I already do. And... 
the longest period of time that I spend naked on a regular basis is when I'm in the shower. And I imagine that would be the case for just about anybody listening to this show, depending on your occupation. So I figured, you know what, if I'm in the shower, and I, I do, I take long showers. I'm not just like a pop in and pop out kind of guy. Sometimes I'll be in the shower for, you know, an hour or whatever. It's like a spa. I give myself a spa experience. Uh, but I figure, okay, when I'm in the shower, I'm standing there naked for a long time. And uh, this seems like a good opportunity for me to have a red light shining on me. And so I just jumped onto Amazon. And again, maybe this is the, this is a, a good red light. Maybe it's not. I don't know. If you, We're just experimenting to see if there's anything to this. Uh, I, I just did a search for um, waterproof red flashlight. And I, uh, I'm looking at this ad right now. It says, best sun, brightest waterproof red light flashlight. It's 1,000 lumens, 350 yard long range red hunting light. So apparently hunters like to use these things because animals don't see red light as well. Costs $30.99 uh, with free delivery. It's supposed to be here on Saturday. So what I'm going to do is uh, get this waterproof red flashlight, which, you know, pretty powerful, 1,000 lumens. Since you can fire it 350 yards, I mean, hopefully you can, uh, hopefully you can adjust the sort of like the focal range and make it the beam a little wider or smaller. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to take this and figure out how to rig it up somehow in my shower. I have some clamps and stuff at my house. Maybe I'll just clamp it somewhere. So that for a period of time, whenever I'm in the shower, I'll just turn that red light on and I'll be bathed in this red light as I shower. And, uh, and I'll give you my report on how I feel or, or what happens. So, but you should experiment with whatever you have at your disposal. If you want to go buy a red light, fine. Who knows? Maybe you can get, get a flashlight and get some red cellophane and put over. I don't know. Um, but if you have access to a red light, maybe you have like uh, a red light from a Halloween party, like an incandescent bulb, you know, those used to be real popular. If you want to try this out, uh, I'd like to hear your feedback. And because again, it's something very simple and we may as well see if there's anything to it. So if you know something about this therapy or you've already had some success with it, feel free to email me and tell me what you know and what your experience has been. Um, but regardless, if you decide to do this, let me know how it's going for you. You know, you can always contact me if you go to joshuapwarren.com. You'll scroll down there and find my email address. I read every email. I can't always reply to every email. I don't have the time, but I do read them all. So that's one very simple uh, experiment. And if it is capable of doing all these things that this guy is promoting in this book, well, that that can change your life, right? Something as simple as exposing yourself to a bath of red light for, you know, five minutes, a couple times, two or three times a week. If it does all that, pfft, why the hell wouldn't you do that? So try it out. We'll see. Here's the second thing. Okay, so that, that's experiment number one for those of you who want to participate. The second thing is an even easier thing for you to tackle. I received a message from a guy who is a big supporter of this show. I don't want to use his name without his explicit permission, but he did say it was fine for me to talk about this on the podcast. Um, he, for many years, has occasionally slipped into these, let's call them psychic states. When um, I think I've heard him call it a hypnagogic state or something like that. Uh, bit of a trance and when that happens he sees visions uh, he sees faces he sees scenarios and often they turn out to be uh, precognitive uh, something that's going to happen in the future or postcognitive something that happened in the past but one way or another he's he's seeing scenes and information 
that come from another point in space-time outside of his own experience. So again, very much what we would apply to as some type of um, of a psychic state, right? And that's perplexing to him because he is primarily a very uh, nuts and bolts sort of clinical engineered you know engineer kind of minded guy and so he obviously has both sides of his brain working in, in a very curious fashion so he's been trying to figure out what's going on you know what happens when he has the these visions and he contacted me to say look at this research that I've been doing he says I'm fascinated by this concept called decentration decentration have you ever heard of that before decentration he said decentration is the opposite of concentration so most of us are trying to concentrate on something because we're distracted in this day and age but maybe we're trying too hard all the time to concentrate and sometimes we need to do the opposite which is to allow the mind to relax and see a broader view which is decentration let me give you an example of this now I don't know if this applies I don't think this applies directly actually to what we're talking about but it's a good place to start there was a Swiss psychologist named Jean Piget and he within the realm of psychology he came up with the psychological term decentration and basically what they say is that uh, this is an example of cognitive development in children that when it when a, a baby is starting to learn the baby is very very focused on one thing at a time you know whatever's right in front of that baby and then as the baby gets older it moves from concentration to decentration which is when it's able to start taking in more information and more variables and see a wider view and put things into a more balanced context so for example and I think I think this is what they said if I remember this correctly when I was doing some reading that like okay let's say you have a baby that's in the concentration stage like you know we're talking the younger stage and maybe you'll have like four toy blocks that you put in front of the baby and you know of course this baby's old enough to communicate with you somewhat and so you you say um look we have four blocks here you know and you spread them out you say we have four blocks here and the baby's like oh great there's four blocks then you slide them all together and then you say are there more blocks or less blocks and the baby says less blocks because the baby is just looking at how much space the blocks take up without counting the blocks so in other words the baby's easily fooled can you imagine that decentration however is when other types of information is being processed and they give this example over and over they say let's give you uh they say if, if you give a, an older uh kid uh the choice between two lollipops that child might choose a lollipop based upon how one flavor is better than the other even though they're both the same size and color so I guess that means like if you take two identical lollipops they're both green and uh, but you know you, one of them's apple like green apple and one of them's lime or whatever you know the, the baby takes that into consideration and now there's another layer of uh, decision making going on here by the way I don't have kids so don't believe anything that I tell you about babies but 
that's sort of the psychological premise behind how they use that terminology. What we're talking about, however, is something that applies, of course, to how we view man manifestation techniques. Because, you know, it, it seems like no matter what kind of a manifestation technique that you're going to get into an experiment with, whether it, as I said earlier, is a wishing machine or a miraculous prayer board or just organic prayer or using a wand or using potions or whatever, you know, like usually, usually you are told it is important for you to clearly visualize the thing that you want. And, you know, you've heard me talk about this a lot, which is use a mental uh, or create, I should say, a mental non-physical mold. You're creating that shell. You're sculpting this thing in the ether with your mind so that eventually all the physical world can shape into it. Um, and so what you're doing is you're concentrating. You're focusing and you're concentrating in order to crystallize the vision of this thing to the best of your ability and if you can't do it with pure imagination you use help you get pictures off the internet or you know you get an object or whatever you need to help you envision this thing that you want but the thing that's usually stressed is focus and concentrate on that when you're putting your intention out there however this gentleman who contacted me said what if you can actually produce even more power if instead of just concentrating, you go through a period of time where you concentrate and then you decentrate and then you concentrate and then you decentrate. Almost like that your brain and your imagination is inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. And this is especially intriguing because um, one thing that you've heard me talk about, or Dr. Mulder probably, and if you haven't, well, it's a good time for you to hear. One thing that you can do before you start using a wishing machine, for example, in order to enhance the sensitivity of your hands is what martial artists call pumping chi. You know, chi or ki or prana is this uh, energy field. It's like a bio energy field that you have around your body. And so martial artist practitioners or martial arts practitioners what they'll do is they'll often they'll take a moment where they center themselves they breathe deeply they get into kind of a meditative state and then they briskly rub their hands palm to palm back and forth i'm doing it right now you can probably hear that you briskly rub your hands until they get nice and warm and if you have any cold spots in your fingers or your joints you know rub them out that's very important you want your hands to feel nice and warm and stimulated and sensitive and then once you've done that for about 30 seconds or a minute you take a deep breath you put your hands again palm to palm palms facing as close together as you can without touching them right in front of your body maybe get them you know like a half inch apart maybe even closer see how close you can get it then you want to pull your hands about maybe one foot apart. And then you want to bring them slowly back together as close as you can without touching them. And then bring them about a foot apart. And you just keep doing this over and over. And as you do this, you will suddenly begin to feel this very strange sensation between your two hands. It feels like a magnetic attraction between the two or a thickness definitely a pronounced heat there but you can start to feel your own bioenergy and once you start to feel your bioenergy and become aware of it well now you're able to start working with it and you're able to start really doing some cool stuff but once you get to that point that's a great time for you to try to get your stick on your wishing machine because what you're doing now is you're taking that same sensation that you're feeling between your two hands when they're not touching and you're looking for that same sensation except this time you're looking for that sensation to come through the machine uh, to the output plate where you get your stick also it can be helpful when you're doing manifestation work as the final step in your manifestation 
after you have that chi built up between your hands envision that looking like a big ball of light and you think about the thing that you want being in that ball of light and then you thrust your hands outward and you fire it you shoot it like a rocket into the cosmos so that it can get out there and do its work and fulfill what you want my point is this process of pumping chi it helps you to, to take um, the energy that's in your body that might sort of be in sort of standby mode and, and activate it and make it dynamic because you're including kinetic motion in there. You're pumping chi. So imagine if you do the same thing using concentration and decentration, except in this case, we're doing it with the brain and the imagination. You're pumping your brain, you're pumping your imagination. You might even call it pump manifestation, where you spend time concentrating exactly on what you want, and then you allow your brain and your vision to just relax and go blank. I'm not sure how to tell you how to do that. I think it's something that you have to figure out for yourself. I do believe it might be possible to create a really interesting tool one day that will help with that, and I'm going to think about it. But for now, I just like to get your feedback on whether or not this process seems to be helpful for you. Like when you sit down to use a manifestation technique, instead of just focusing uh, and, and, and concentrating, Try going back and forth. Concentrate and then let it go and just relax. And then concentrate and then let it go for a little bit and relax. And just do that over and over and over and see if it starts creating like uh, almost a reinforcing transmission. It's kind of like what a Tesla coil does. When you turn on a Tesla coil, I mean, it's, it's constantly shooting wave after wave after wave out there, ripples going all across uh, the environment and then you get to the point to where you know one wave starts reinforcing the other wave and it, it just continues to build up momentum so try it out try it out it, does, it, it might take you a little bit longer maybe it won't maybe instead of like, like let's say you're the type of person who sits down you spend two minutes trying to concentrate on something well try breaking that up and do 30 seconds concentrate 30 seconds decentrate, 30 seconds concentrate, 30 seconds decentrate, and then maybe top it off with one last concentration. Crazy? I don't know. It's an experiment. Try it out. Try it out. Let's see what happens. So those are two simple experiments. And you know, when I say manifestation, I'm talking about manifesting whatever you want. Money, wellness, relationships, success, whatever it is you need. And I hope that you have some tools to help you out. Um, you know I have plenty of those tools in the curiosity shop at joshuapwarren.com, tools for all budgets. But even if you're just using basic visualization, um, something close to what we would consider just prayer or meditation or a, a picture off the internet that you're focusing on, it doesn't matter. If you're going to use anything to help you create a manifestation, use that technique and let me know what happens. I told you that I'm going to give away $100 and guess what? I'm going to do that today. Um, the thing is, there is a caveat. I am really busy. I'm in the middle of traveling and you can only get the $100 if you have uh, a PayPal account or some way of getting money from a PayPal account because that makes it easy for me. All I have to do is get your email address, go to PayPal, put in $100, hit send, and boom, you've got it. And then when you have it, well then, you can transfer that to your bank account, or I mean, there are numerous ways where you could just use it and buy stuff online with it. I mean, whatever you wanna do with it. But uh, I don't have time to sit down and write you a check or put some cash in the mail and also that becomes even more complex if you're dealing with somebody in another country uh, so you've got to have a PayPal account in order to to get this but here's what I'm gonna do 
Um, and, and I'm going to be doing, I've done this before, and I'm going to start doing it more often now. If you subscribe to my free e-newsletter, if you go to joshuapwarren.com, you sign up for my free e-newsletter, you know it takes you just two seconds. Put your email address in there. That way I can email you and update you briefly here and there as breaking things are happening. If you subscribe to my free e-newsletter, and, and if you're not a subscriber, remember now, you get a free digital good luck charm instantly when you sign up. I'm going to send out uh, an e-newsletter, and it is going to say, whoever is the 13th person to hit the reply button, um, actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. I take that back. Whoever is the 13th person to forward this to this email address is going to get the hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a that's a better way because I, I want to have a whole separate account set up just for this, so I can see the order in which the emails come in, and whoever's number thirteen gets the hundred bucks. But I'm going to do more things like this. I'm going to give away some money on my Twitter. Um, it's, it's for one thing, it makes people very happy. Everybody can use some money right now. It's good karma. It's a great way for me to get more people to come in, get on the newsletter list, get on the Twitter, all that kind of stuff. So um, be sure you sign up. If you haven't already, you better sign up because I'm doing this today, but I will be doing it again soon. Go to joshuapwarren.com, sign up for the free e-newsletter. If you like this podcast, please send it to other people. It's always short and free, and I don't know why anybody wouldn't, you know, learn something from it, like something about it. Tell other people about it. When you're at joshuapwarren.com, there's a lot of cool stuff to look at, but uh, if you go to the curiosity shop in particular, well, <laughs> you're going to find some things there that you won't find anywhere else in the world. I promise you that. I'm not sure when I'll be able to leave another podcast for you because I am traveling a lot over the next week and doing more TV work. I might have an opportunity to do a podcast for you in one of my hotel rooms. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But if, if you don't hear from me for about a week, you'll know what's going on. I just don't have a moment to myself because these TV shoot schedules are so chaotic and especially traveling right now is very weird and unpredictable. But while you're at joshuapwarren.com, I hope that you will sign up and you will click the link to this podcast. It's called Joshua P. Warren Daily. It's always short, always free. It is uncensored. It is independent. You can subscribe through various means on various platforms. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Joshua P. Warren, at Joshua P. Warren. And I usually tweet when a new one is available. So that is it for today. Hope you learned something. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest and support. Thank you for staying curious. And I will talk to you again soon.